Hello, everyone. I'm Naoki Shinohara, professor of Kyoto University, Japan, and a member of the IEICE. Uh, today, it's a webinar of the IEICE. Uh, I would like to introduce the recent technologies and the commercial applications of the far field wireless power transfer. Maybe you all know uh, what is a wireless power transfer. It's a one of the uh, hottest topic in this research field. Uh, today, uh, I would like to introduce uh, technology and the applications of the mainly far field wireless power transfer. I hope you enjoy my talk. So first of all, I would like to uh, introduce the what is a wireless power transfer. Maybe you know all. So uh, our life is supported by the electricity. Uh, we cannot consider the, our life without electricity now. And of course, uh, our life uh, is uh, supported by the communications. Uh, both uh, electricity and uh, information are very, very important for our life. But uh, information is carried uh, wirelessly uh, by mobile phone, TV, radio, or the other. Uh, so wireless power transfer, uh, both technologies are merged into one. Uh, we carry electricity uh, wirelessly. So it's very simple. So uh, basic theory uh, is a very simple, of course. Uh, it's based on the Maxwell's equation. Uh, of course, as you know, uh, we can describe all uh, electromagnetic uh, field theory, wave theory, and uh, optical theories, all by the Maxwell's equation. So uh, maybe you must uh, you may uh, you must know. Uh, these uh, equations are, are, are founded by the Maxwell's about 150 years ago. It's very simple and a beautiful uh, equation to describe all phenomena of the electromagnetic waves. So uh, after the prediction of the radio wave by the Maxwell uh, by the Maxwell's equation, uh, pointing. Uh, uh, pointing uh, right, the pointing vector as an energy flux of the radio waves. So uh, it's very uh, easy to understand. Uh, point, pointing vector indicates the radio wave itself is uh, energy. So uh, what uh, we need for the wireless power transfer is very simple. Uh, basic theory of the magnetic uh, electromagnetic field, wave, uh, optical field, and uh, electricity is the uh, same by the Maxwell's equation. So uh, what we need for wireless power transfer is just a frequency conversion of the carrier wave. Uh, we usually apply uh, megahertz or gigahertz or sometimes terahertz, uh, very high frequency, uh, uh, high, very high frequency for radio waves. And uh, on contrary, uh, we apply, uh, for example, 60 hertz or uh, 50 hertz in Japan or uh, direct current as a uh, electricity. So uh, what we need for WPT is just a frequency conversion from the gigahertz to uh, 60 hertz or direct current. So it's very simple. And uh, uh, simple means, so circuit and uh, antenna theory is uh, almost the same as uh, uh, commonly applied for the wireless information and the electricity. So first of all, for WPT, uh, we combust the DC electricity to high frequency, for example, microwave frequency. And uh, sometimes uh, we apply the uh, RF amplifier with semiconductor devices, or sometimes we apply the microwave tube as a frequency converter. And uh, uh, after uh, generating the microwave, uh, we transmit it uh, to the uh, uh, receivers. And uh, this is the uh, same antenna technology, uh, both for the wireless power transfer and the wireless information. There is no difference. Uh, only the difference uh, between the WPT and the wireless information is just a viewpoint of the energy. Uh, for the wireless communication system, uh, they 
uh, consider uh, radio wave itself is just a carrier of the information and uh, they don't mind the mainly the efficiency from the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna. But uh, in the WPT system, uh, carrier, uh, radio wave carrier itself is most important and uh, uh, efficiency from the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna is most important. So it's uh, just a uh, different of uh, the viewpoint of the energy. So I, I'd like to explain later in this talk. So uh, after receiving the uh, microwave uh, into the receiving antenna, uh, we combat the frequency from the microwave frequency to the direct current of the 60 hertz uh, with a diode semiconductor devices. So uh, it's very simple diagram of the uh, far field WPT uh, systems. And uh, from here, uh, I'd like to introduce a uh, history of the wireless power transfer. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, three big uh, points uh, in the history of the wireless power transfer. Uh, first big point is, of course, the uh, invention of the wireless power transfer. And the uh, first wireless power transfer experiment uh, was carried out in the end of the 19th century by Nikola Tesla. Maybe you all know uh, scientific giant Nikola Tesla. Uh, around, the, uh, around the 19, uh, 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 sorry, uh, around the uh, end of the uh, 19th century, uh, Nikola Tesla uh, carried out uh, uh, some kind of the wireless power transfer. Uh, inductive wireless power transfer or the uh, wireless power transfer via 160 kilohertz uh, radio waves. So, uh, so uh, she, uh, I think uh, she, found, uh, she studied the history of the wireless power transfer. And the, at the last, at the end of his life, uh, Tesla uh, proposed the name of the world system. Uh, in, in his mind, uh, we can transmit the wireless energy on the earth everywhere. So uh, he named it a world system and uh, his technology is based on the resonance WPT I'd like to explain later, uh, third big point of the wireless power transfer history. Uh, but uh, in, the, uh, in the end of the 19th century, unfortunately, uh, he, could not, uh, 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 he could not realize this world system. Uh, everywhere uh, we can receive the wireless power transfer system uh, on the earth. But uh, if uh, he uh, failed or even if he failed or he succeeded in the wireless power transfer, uh, it's a fast and great, uh, uh, fast and a great step of the wireless power transfer uh, in the world. Uh, fast uh, WPT experiment, uh, was carried out by Nikola Tesla. And uh, in the 60s, uh, uh, Dr. William Brown uh, restarted the wireless power transfer uh, via microwave. Uh, before the 1960s, uh, radio wave frequency was uh, a little bit lower than the microwave. And uh, around the 60s, or, uh, so after the World War II, uh, we could apply the microwaves, uh, gigahertz frequency radio waves uh, for wireless communication. So uh, William Brown proposed the wireless power transfer via microwave, and he named it a microwave power transfer, and uh, he carried out a various kind of the uh, narrow beam. Narrow beam means a uh, uh, very uh, uh, sharp uh, beam WPT uh, field experiment uh, in 60s and 70s. For example, in uh, 1964, he uh, succeeded in the wireless powered microwave powered drone uh, in, our, uh, in our head. So here you can see he's uh, 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 Dr. William Brown and uh, this is a fast microwave powered drone in 60s. And uh, 10 years later of the, this uh, fast microwave powered drone experiment, uh, he succeeded 
in the world record of the RF, uh, DC microwave DC conversion efficiency uh, in the laboratory experiment. Uh, this is a picture of the uh, world records uh, WPT experiment in his laboratory. And uh, he applies a magnet or microwave tube technology and uh, he put it uh, up, uh, uh, at a distance of the upper, uh, approximately 1.7 meters. And uh, in, at the distance of the 1.7 meters, uh, with help of the high efficiency magnetron technology and the high efficiency uh, rectifier technology, uh, he achieved uh, approximately 54 uh, total uh, efficiency uh, from DC to DC. So uh, it's the greatest uh, WPT experiment uh, in the world. And uh, at the same time, in parallel, uh, he carried out the longest uh, beam type WPT experiment uh, in Goldstone in US. Uh, he, uh, he applies uh, 26 meters uh, aperture uh, category parabolic antenna as a transmitter and the, at the 1.6 kilometer uh, away uh, he put the very big uh, three meter by seven meters uh, rectifier array on the shields and uh, it's a picture of this uh, biggest uh, WPT experiment and uh, he transmitted uh, 450 kilowatts uh, at the uh, 2.388 uh, gigahertz, uh, gigahertz frequency and the, at the receiver approximately uh, uh, 30, uh, 30 kilowatts uh, as a DC power uh, was uh, received. So uh, this is the biggest, uh, uh, biggest uh, beam type uh, WPT experiment in the world in 1975. Uh, this is the second big point of the, in the history of the wireless power transfer. So uh, I think uh, William Brown uh, is the most important uh, researcher uh, in the history of the wireless power transfer, uh, especially a uh, far field wireless power transfer uh, mm -hmm. via microwaves. And uh, after the success of the William Brown's experiment, uh, in Kyoto University from the 80s, uh, we studied the research of the wireless power transfer uh, via microwave. And uh, my boss, uh, Professor Hiroshi Matsumoto, uh, carried out uh, some uh, space rocket experiment of the microwave power transfer. And, uh, 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 and uh, after 90s, I joined, uh, I joined it, uh, Professor Matsumoto's laboratory as a student, and uh, I started on my research life uh, from 90s. And uh, through this 30 years, 40 years uh, in Kyoto University, uh, we carried out a various kind of the field experiment of the wireless power transfer via microwave. Uh, sometimes uh, we apply the 2.45 gigahertz frequency, and uh, sometimes we apply the 5.8 gigahertz. So uh, this is a, a small uh, point uh, in the history of the wireless power transfer, but a big point uh, in the history of the wireless power transfer in Japan. So uh, if uh, you are interested in our activity and the historical activity, uh, please visit YouTube and uh, please search uh, the, uh, on YouTube, Shinohara Laboratory. Uh, we uploaded the various kinds of the historical uh, world uh, WPT field experiment, uh, WPT to the flying airplane, uh, WPT uh, from the point to point of the experiment, and uh, beam controlling uh, experiment or the other. So uh, uh, with this uh, QR code, uh, it's easy to access our uh, YouTube channel. So uh, if you are interested in our activities, uh, please visit uh, YouTube and uh, please search on the YouTube uh, with word of the Shinohara laboratory. And uh, in 20, uh, 21st century, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology Group uh, invents the resonance uh, WPT technologies. 
Um, uh, in, uh, so uh, this is a third uh, big point in the history of the wireless power transfer. This is not a far field WPT, and uh, this is uh, originally the coupled WPT via a low frequency magnetic field. And uh, usually uh, we cannot transmit uh, wireless power to the far point uh, with a low frequency magnetic field only. This is uh, or, uh, this is named the uh, uh, inductive coupling WPT. But the uh, MIT group uh, proposed uh, so, uh, uh, MIT group uh, read a new theory with a resonance technology to the WPT, and uh, with this resonance WPT. Uh, L and C uh, resonance, uh, they succeeded. Uh, uh, they succeeded in uh, extending the distance with based on the inductive uh, coupling WPT. So uh, this is a very amazing technology at the first uh, first of the uh, 21st century. Uh, 21st century. So uh, history of the WPT can be considered as a before uh, MIT and uh, after MIT unseen. Uh, so uh, after MIT's uh, revolution, uh, it, it, it is considered of the Columbus uh, X. And uh, after the revolution of the MIT uh, resonance WPT, uh, the, uh, the world of the WPT is changed. And uh, recently, we are in the 2020. Uh, now, in 2022, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, startup companies of the uh, to promote the wireless power transfer. And uh, now uh, in Japan, uh, we are creating the new radio radiation with the wireless power transfer. Uh, before the MIT's revolution, uh, we could not consider the new regulation of the wireless power transfer and the startup company of the WPT or the other. But uh, now uh, the world of the WPT is changed. So uh, this is the third uh, biggest point in the history of the uh, wireless power transfer. So uh, from here, uh, I'd like to introduce at first a technology of the WPT, uh, mainly uh, we use uh, microwaves. And uh, we divide the technology of the wireless power transfer via microwave into two, uh, wide beam WPT and uh, narrow beam WPT. So uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, wide beam WPT technology named the rectenna, rectifying antenna. So, uh, so I'd like to explain it uh, later. So uh, we divide the WPT technology into mainly two, uh, narrow beam and uh, wide beam as I, uh, as I explained now. So in the narrow beam WPT, uh, we concentrate the transmitting, transmitting microwave power into the one receiver mainly. And uh, in this system, uh, of course, uh, we focus uh, almost all wireless power transfer into one receiver. It means it's very high frequency system. And uh, if a user requests, uh, it's easy to transmit the high power. Uh, if uh, if uh, a station is out, uh, we can transmit uh, one kilowatt or 10 kilowatt and 100 kilowatt uh, microwave power. Uh, so uh, this is named a narrow beam WPT and historically, for example, Rian Brown uh, carried out a, a lot of uh, narrow beam WPT technologies. So, uh, but uh, unfortunately, I, uh, I'd like to explain later, uh, in the narrow beam WPT system, theoretically, we can transmit the wireless power uh, with a 100% uh, beam efficiency from the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna. But uh, size of the antenna uh, is uh, bigger than what you see theoretically uh, with a microwave frequency. Of course, uh, if uh, we can uh, increase the frequency, for example, millimeter wave or terahertz wave, uh, we can reduce the size of the antenna and the uh, antenna size uh, is approximately the same uh, as uh, what you think. But uh, in the microwave frequency, uh, size of the antenna is bigger uh, than what you think, and it means uh, it, is not, uh, uh, it is not suitable as a commercial application uh, instead of the wire. 
So uh, recently, another commercial application, uh, a lot of people consider uh, we don't need to concentrate, concentrate the microwave power into one receiver, but uh, a lot of users request the wireless power, like a wireless communication system. So uh, recently, uh, maybe as a commercial application, uh, there are a lot of interesting uh, system and uh, technology of the uh, wide beam WPTs. Uh, in the wide beam WPT, uh, we uh, we don't concentrate the wireless power into the one into one, but uh, we uh, diffuse the microwave power uh, to everywhere, like a wireless communication. But and uh, use a lot of users uh, uh, can receive the wireless power uh, simultaneously. So uh, this is like a wireless communication system and it's very convenient system we think. So uh, recently, uh, wide beam uh, WPT is uh, one of the big trends uh, for other commercial uh, WPT applications. And uh, in other bands, uh, diffused, uh, diffused microwave power is uh, almost uh, everywhere in our, uh, in our uh, life now. Uh, it's a uh, wireless power uh, for the uh, wireless information systems. So uh, if uh, we can receive the uh, energy uh, from the wireless information wave, so uh, it's very, uh, it's uh, more convenient. So uh, this technology is named the energy harvesting uh, from the ambient radio waves. So in this system, there is no special power source and the uh, power source is a uh, uh, base station of the Wi-Fi or uh, mobile phone or the TV tower. So uh, this is the other interesting technology of the energy harvesting uh, without any power source, but uh, it's uh, uh, one kind of the wireless, uh, wireless power transfer technology. So uh, today uh, I focus the beam type, uh, narrow beam type WPT and the uh, wide beam type WPT. And uh, first of all, I'd like to explain the technology of the uh, wide beam uh, WPT. So uh, by the way, uh, now uh, I'm, work, uh, I'm working uh, in the ITUR, uh, International Telecommunication Union uh, Radio Communication Sector. And uh, in the ITU, uh, there are very ho uh, uh, there are very hot uh, discussion uh, to uh, consider uh, what is a wireless power transfer and uh, how to uh, establish a new regulation of the wireless power transfer. And uh, in 2016, uh, we reached uh, one agreement uh, to publish the report of the far field wireless power transfer. Uh, ITU report SM 2392-0, uh, 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 application of the wireless power transfer, uh, uh, wireless power transfer at a wireless, pa pa uh, wireless power trans transmission via radio frequency B. So in this report, uh, various kinds of the uh, WPT application uh, are covered. So uh, if you are interested in, uh, you are interested in the each uh, application of the wireless power transfer, uh, please visit the website of the ITUR and please check the, this ITUR report of the uh, wireless power transmission via radio frequency B. So uh, 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 application A uh, covers the uh, wide beam WPT and uh, B is a uh, uh, WPT in closed area and C covers an uh, RBM WPT. Uh, so uh, it's very interesting report and uh, this is a very uh, great advance uh, in the discussion of the, in the ITUR. So uh, as I told you, uh, uh, for the double uh, wide beam WPT, uh, we uh, we don't focus the wireless power into the one receiver. So uh, it means uh, important technology uh, of the for the wide beam WPT is mainly the receiver, uh, receiver, uh, receiver, uh, receiving antenna and uh, receiving circuit. 
uh, because uh, for the uh, transmitter, uh, there is no special technology. It's like a wireless communication system, and uh, mainly uh, important technology for the wide beam WPT is a receiver. And the uh, receiver uh, is named a rectifying rectifying antenna. This is uh, uh, combined with uh, antenna and uh, uh, rectifying circuit with a uh, diode. So uh, now in the world, there are a lot of interesting technology of the uh, rectifying for the wide beam WPT or the, for the energy harvesting. Uh, for example, of course, uh, antenna is uh, one of the uh, most important technology uh, for the uh, wide beam WPT and uh, circuit and uh, uh, device. Uh, uh, of course, that's uh, important uh, to increase the uh, uh, efficiency of the system of the WPT. So uh, for the wide beam WPT, uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, technology of the rectainer uh, now. Uh, I'd like to introduce a theory and the technology of the uh, Rectainer uh, technology from here. So uh, this is a, a, a very simple block diagram of the Rectainer. Uh, as I told you, uh, antenna uh, is composed of the uh, uh, Rectainer is composed of the antenna and the rectifying circuit with mainly the diode. Sometimes as the, uh, some group uh, applies a uh, hem or the other three volt devices uh, in the rectifying circuit, but uh, mainly. Uh, diode, a two port device is uh, applied in the rectifying circuit. And uh, now uh, it's easy to find uh, 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 various kinds of the rect uh, rectainer in the database of the scientific papers now. And uh, for example, this is a world first uh, rectainer developed by the William Brown. So uh, in that time, uh, there was uh, there was no microstrip antenna, the microstrip uh, circuit. So uh, uh, we are uh, developed the first rectainer with a rigid antenna and a rigid circuit with a, a diode. It's very simple, but uh, it's very high efficiency rect uh, rectainer. And uh, in Japan, uh, in Hokkaido University, uh, the first rectainer uh, in Japan uh, was developed with a microstrip antenna and a microstrip uh, circuit technology. So this is a very uh, interesting uh, Japanese first uh, rectainer developed by the Hokkaido University. And uh, in 90s, uh, there, uh, there was a very famous university, Texas a and University in US uh, to develop a good rectainer and a good WPT system. And uh, they, uh, Professor Kai Chan of the, in the Texas a and University, uh, he uh, developed a, a very high frequency uh, rectifier uh, in the 90s. So this is a, a one example of the uh, millimeter wave rectifier at uh, 35 gigahertz in 90s. So uh, uh, the, there are a lot of interesting uh, rectainers in the world. So uh, theoretically, uh, we uh, we need a very high efficiency rectifier. And uh, of course, uh, as you know, uh, there are some kind of the rectifier, uh, single shunt or the half wave rectifier, full bridge rectifier or the other. Uh, but uh, we need a theoretically 100% rectifier. And uh, this is a very uh, uh, interesting uh, paper. Uh, to describe the theory of the rectifier by a famous Japanese professor Ohira. And uh, he chose uh, some kind of the rectifier, a single series, single shunt, or bridge, or double voltage, or the double current. And uh, in, in his paper, uh, he formulated the RFDC conversion efficiency in this uh, rectifier with single series, or a bridge, or the other. And uh, he read uh, theoretically uh, with this uh, with this uh, rectifier uh, efficiency reached approximately over eighty percent or uh, uh, over ninety percent. So uh, it means uh, by his theory only uh, we cannot read uh, theoretically one hundred percent compatible efficiency. 
but uh, in his theory, uh, he, uh, he didn't uh, involve the combination of the harmonics. Only uh, so uh, a list of the efficiency, for example, approximately 20% loss in the single series or the single sun. Uh, this, uh, some part of the loss uh, is uh, caused by the uh, lead radiation of the harmonics. Uh, in the diode. So, uh, pre, uh, so uh, we apply uh, the single uh, shunt uh, rectifier with a combination of the re, uh, uh, reuse of the harmonics. So this is an original paper by uh, Professor uh, Gatman, uh, New York University in uh, 1970, uh, 1979. It's very old paper. But uh, here you can see uh, uh, there is a single shunt diode here. And uh, she adds the uh, quarter rings uh, uh, distributed line uh, and the capacitor here after the uh, quarter rings uh, distributed line. Uh, with combination of this uh, quarter rings distributed line and the capacitors as an output filter, uh, uh, he, uh, he uh, create uh, the combination of the uh, open uh, circuit for odd harmonics and uh, short circuit for the uh, even harmonics. And uh, uh, this combination of the uh, open and short for odd and uh, uh, even uh, harmonics respectively, uh, as a result of the, uh, this combination, uh, this uh, rectifier, uh, this rectifier, single sound rectifier, uh, 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 works uh, like the uh, uh, cross F amplifiers. So, as a result of the reuse of the harmonics, uh, we can uh, uh, we can combat the all microwave power uh, with theoretically one hundred percent. So uh, if you are interested in uh, the detailed theory of the, this single sound theory like cross F amplifier, uh, please uh, see this uh, paper. Uh, it's very paper, uh, it's very old paper. But uh, and this is a very basic theory of the uh, rectifier uh, for the WPT with theoretically 100%. So, uh, uh, it's very interesting technology of the rectifier. So uh, uh, if uh, you would like to develop the rectifier for WPT, uh, please try to apply this uh, single sound rectifier like cross F amplifier. So uh, of course, uh, uh, even if uh, we realize the theoretically 100% by the single sound, uh, single sound theory, uh, real diode involves the losses. So uh, Professor Kai Chan of the Texas a and University uh, formulate the efficiency and the loss uh, of the rectifier with a real diode. Uh, it's very, uh, it seems a little bit complex uh, formula uh, to calculate the efficiency of the uh, with a real diode, but uh, uh, it's easy to realize. Uh, it's easy to calculate the efficiency uh, in the uh, Excel, uh, Excel uh, software. So uh, based on this uh, chan theory, uh, it's easy to uh, it's easy to calculate the real uh, efficiency. Uh, of the uh, rectifiers. So uh, this is a, a frequency trend of the developed uh, F, uh, rectenna of the RFDC composite efficiency. Uh, around the S-band or C-band, uh, we have already reached uh, over 80% or 90% uh, combustion efficiency. And uh, recently, uh, a uh, lot of people uh, focused on the millimeter wave rectifier and uh, uh, especially around the 100, 100 gigahertz uh, frequency band uh, there are a lot of uh, interesting uh, paper uh, for uh, to develop the rectifier and uh, recently uh, 
they read uh, approximately 40% RFDC conversion efficiency at the, uh, around the 100 uh, gigahertz. And uh, in Japan, uh, in Tsukuba University Group, uh, they have already developed a, a 300 gigahertz rectifier. But uh, unfortunately, even uh, with their technology, uh, conversion efficiency at uh, 300 gigahertz is a little bit poor. But uh, this uh, trend curve uh, is uh, predicted by the uh, uh, Kai Chan's uh, theory. Uh, so uh, it's very interesting. But uh, uh, if uh, you try to develop the rectifier uh, with good technology, uh, we can increase the RF conversion efficiency uh, more. Uh, uh, for example, uh, at uh, uh, 100 gigahertz, uh, someday uh, we can reach uh, over 70% uh, uh, and 80% uh, RF, uh, RF conversion efficiency, uh, I believe. And uh, this is a typical RF DC conversion efficiency of the rectifier. So uh, diode has a, like this uh, VI curve. And uh, usually uh, we have uh, um, the diode has a junction voltage and a breakdown voltage. So uh, caused by the uh, uh, junction voltage effect and a breakdown voltage effect, uh, peak efficiency reached 90% at uh, 2.45 gigahertz, et cetera, as I told you. But uh, at a low, frequency, a low input power or the high input power, uh, efficiency decreases. So uh, this is a, a typical trend of the RFDC conversion of the rectifier. So uh, how to increase the peak efficiency? Uh, of course, it is uh, based on the Kai Chan theory, but uh, uh, how to increase the peak RFDC, peak RFDC conversion efficiency? Uh, I propose uh, mainly uh, this three way. Uh, one is uh, please choose the low uh, omega RC diode. So uh, this uh, number one is uh, based on the Kai Chan theory. And uh, from this uh, figure, uh, a peak at the very close to the breakdown voltage. So uh, it means uh, we, uh, we have to consider the how to add the high voltage at the diode almost uh, close to the breakdown voltage. So uh, this is, of course, uh, this is uh, due to the breakdown voltage and uh, of the diode. But uh, if we have a good circuit technology, uh, we can uh, increase the uh, voltage at the diode. Uh, so uh, this is a very interesting approach. And uh, as I told you, uh, as I explained uh, now uh, in the single sum theory, uh, please uh, consider how to uh, apply the, how to reuse the higher harmonics and uh, how to combine the higher harmonics like craft amplifier. So uh, I would like to sum, uh, summarize uh, this uh, technology, how to increase the peak, w, uh, peak RFDC conversion efficiency, sync amplifier design, even in the uh, rectifier design. So uh, this uh, explanation is very similar to the uh, amplifier design technology. So uh, even if uh, we would like to develop the rectifier, uh, please think our amplifier design in the rectifier design. This is a, 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 a important point. Uh, how to increase our FDC conversion efficiency of the rectifier. And uh, uh, in this section, uh, the, now I, I, fo I focus mainly on the wide beam WPT technologies. It means uh, input, uh, input microwave power uh, at the receiver is very low. So uh, how to increase our FDC conversion at the low power uh, input? So uh, easiest way uh, to increase the uh, conversion efficiency is to apply the large antenna, uh, high gain antenna. Uh, it's very uh, simple, but uh, for the mobility, uh, for, the, uh, for the convenience, uh, large antenna is not uh, suitable. 
Uh, so uh, next, uh, we have to consider uh, to uh, revise the circuit uh, with a high efficiency as a low input microwave power. So uh, from here, I'd like to uh, explain uh, how to increase the efficiency as a low input power with the circuit technology. So uh, as I told you, uh, peak uh, efficiency is uh, enough at the S band or C band. But uh, now uh, we have to consider the uh, conversion efficiency at a low input power. For example, uh, peak efficiency is realized at a uh, few watt typically. But uh, for the wide beam WPT system, uh, input microwave power is uh, below to the milliwatt, uh, sometimes uh, microwatt input power only. So uh, how to increase the uh, conversion efficiency uh, such a low power input microwave. So uh, uh, important point is uh, think how to add the high voltage at the diode, if possible, close to breakdown voltage. So uh, there are some interesting approach uh, to add the high voltage at the diode. Uh, high, uh, some researcher applies a high impedance circuit and uh, some researcher uh, uh, applies a, a very good impedance matching technology at the low input power. And uh, some researchers apply the uh, rectifier with a resonator. And uh, uh, some research, uh, research group applies uh, uh, to add the bias voltage at the receiver, but uh, uh, hopefully uh, self bias without any extra battery is uh, better. So uh, please check the uh, papers uh, to describe the low power rectifier and uh, uh, there are a lot of interesting approach, a circuit approach to increase a uh, uh, composite efficiency at a uh, uh, low power. And uh, I'd like to introduce uh, some uh, good technology uh, in Japan and uh, in EU. Uh, this is a very uh, special technology uh, to, uh, to apply a high impedance antenna and circuit by the Kanazawa Institute of Technology Japan. Uh, they developed a 1.6 kilo ohm uh, high impedance antenna and circuit and uh, as a uh, result of the uh, high impedance antenna and circuit technology, uh, they, uh, they can increase uh, uh, RFDC conversion at uh, minus, uh, minus 20 dB or minus 30 uh, dBm. So uh, it's very uh, uh, good technology to increase uh, uh, RFDC conversion efficiency at uh, uh, below milliwatt. And uh, my friend, uh, professor in University of Liverpool, uh, developed a uh, uh, high impedance and uh, broadband uh, rectainers. So uh, his technology is mainly for the energy harvesting. So energy ha for the energy harvesting, uh, we need a broadband antenna and rectifier because uh, uh, ambient radio wave is moderated. So, uh, but uh, if uh, we can uh, develop the broadband rectifier, uh, we can gather the radio wave power in the uh, wide frequency band. So it's very interesting approach. So uh, my friend, uh, professor of the University of uh, Liverpool uh, succeeded uh, in uh, increasing the RFDC conversion efficiency at a low power for energy harvester. It's very interesting. And uh, so uh, I, uh, I moved to the next technology uh, WPT uh, for, uh, 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 for narrow beam WPT. And uh, in this part, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, mainly two technology. Uh, one is the beam forming because uh, we have to uh, focus the narrow beam into the receiver. And the uh, second uh, technology uh, is a, a low cost and a high efficiency transmitter. Uh, because uh, for the narrow beam WPT, uh, we need a high efficiency uh, microwave transmitter like uh, William Brown, and uh, we need a low cost uh, uh, microwave transmitter uh, for the commercial application. So uh, in this part, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, two technology, uh, beam forming and uh, uh, low cost microwave uh, generators. 
So, uh, number one, uh, I'd like to introduce a beam forming technology. So, uh, in general, there are a lot of uh, interesting technology uh, of the beam forming. So, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, later uh, uh, U, uh, US startup company, famous uh, startup company, OSEA, uh, is developing the indoor. Uh, uh, beam forming and the target detecting system named Kota. And uh, the other group uh, is de uh, develop, uh, other group is developing the special device uh, for the receiver and for the uh, transmitter uh, for narrow beam WPT. And the uh, US group uh, has succeeded uh, in the narrow beam uh, field experiment, uh, like the gold stone by the William Brown. So uh, this is a very uh, good advance in recent one, two years. So uh, for this uh, technology, uh, we need a beam forming and a target detecting technologies. So uh, first of all, this is a, a very basic theory of the uh, beam, uh, narrow beam. So from, uh, from transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna, uh, in the narrow beam WPT system, we have to focus the microwave power. Uh, so, of course, uh, it's easy to calculate the beam efficiency from the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna uh, uh, is calculated by the first transmission formula, as you know all. And uh, from this first uh, first transmission formula, uh, it's easy to calculate the beam efficiency uh, from, uh, like this uh, formula. And uh, with uh, basically uh, beam efficiency is uh, formulated by this uh, free transmission formula. And uh, so with this uh, free formula, how to increase the beam efficiency? So uh, easiest way uh, is uh, please see the free transmission formula. In this, uh, uh, in this formula, uh, we have only uh, mainly four uh, parameters. And uh, we can mass uh, this AP and the AR as a uh, aperture of the transmitting and receiving antenna. So mainly uh, only uh, three parameters are in the first transmission formula. So uh, how to increase the beam efficiency with a uh, uh, first transmission formula? Uh, it's easy and uh, uh, not interesting uh, solution. So we have to choose uh, higher frequency or the, or the shorter wavelengths lambda, or uh, larger aperture antenna, or shorter distance. It's very simple and uh, uh, not interesting. So, uh, it, uh, but uh, this is a final solution. But uh, if uh, we can increase the frequency, uh, beam efficiency increases, but uh, circuit efficiency decreases. Uh, this is uh, engineering. Uh, engineering. Uh, problem. Uh, as I uh, explained to you, as I showed you, uh, uh, frequency, uh, when uh, frequency increases, uh, efficiency of the rectifier uh, decreases. So uh, now, so uh, we are using a microwave mainly, but uh, if we have a good semiconductor or a good circuit technology, uh, we can increase our frequency with a high frequency, a high efficiency. And uh, when uh, we can increase a large aperture antenna, uh, uh, when we increase a uh, uh, aperture of the antenna, of course, uh, it's the easiest way, but uh, inconvenient for mo uh, for mobile, as I explained. Uh, as I explained, and uh, in the shorter distance, uh, it's the easiest way. Uh, we put a receiver in, uh, just in front of the uh, transmitter. But uh, it's uh, like a near field system and uh, it is not uh, convenient. So uh, we have to uh, search uh, the other way uh, how to increase uh, beam efficiency. So uh, the other way uh, to increase the beam efficiency is uh, uh, one is a uh, 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 application of the uh, amplitude tapering or the uh, optimization. The other is uh, optimization of the amplitude and the phase in the phase array. So uh, this is a uh, uh, very uh, difficult to increase the beam efficiency because uh, uh, radiated uh, transmitted uh, radio wave uh, is 
uh, is based on the max exactly max education. So uh, it's very uh, it is not easy to increase the efficiency, but uh, we have the uh, some uh, we have these amplitude tapering of the uh, phasor uh, phasor technology. So uh, we have to try to increase the beam efficiency. And uh, this uh, first transmission formula uh, is uh, only applied for the in front uh, receiver only. So if uh, we put the receiver just in front of the uh, transmitting antenna, of course, it means uh, front gain is a maximum in this antenna. And uh, in, this, uh, in this situation, of course, uh, resonance frequency of the transmitter and receiver is ma uh, much than the circuit impedance are much than the antenna gain in front is a uh, max. So uh, efficiency is uh, max uh, in this uh, narrow beam WPT system. But uh, for the mobile application, uh, user uh, must move uh, somewhere. So uh, in this situation, unfortunately, uh, we cannot detect the uh, target position. Uh, because uh, in the Fafield WPT system, uh, we cannot rec uh, recognize the uh, target position. This is uncoupled WPT. So uh, in this situation, uh, antenna gain decreases, uh, transmitting antenna gain decreases and uh, efficiency decreases. So, uh, but uh, when uh, we, uh, we can detect the uh, target position, uh, we can control the beam direction by the phasor technology or the moving antenna technology. So uh, in order to keep a maximum efficiency, uh, beam direction must be controlled and the target position must be detected. So uh, in the narrow beam WPT uh, system, uh, phased array antenna technology and the target, uh, ta target detecting technologies are uh, most important. So uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to explain the target detecting and uh, later uh, after detecting the position, uh, we uh, control the beam direction. So uh, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, target detecting and uh, uh, beam controlling system uh, named the uh, uh, retro directive system. Uh, this is a conceptual image of the retro directive system. Uh, somewhere, from somewhere, uh, pilot signal uh, is coming uh, to the phase array system. And the, at the, each antenna, uh, uh, this pilot signal uh, is received. And uh, after receiving the pilot signal, uh, with help of the mixer and the local signal, uh, in each antenna, uh, we, uh, we combine the local signal on the incoming pilot signal. And uh, uh, after the elimination, uh, elimination of the higher frequency, uh, we can create the phase conjugation or at the each antenna. For example, uh, from the uh, plus one, two, three, uh, theta. Uh, and uh, we can create the minus one, minus two, minus three, theta as a phase at the each antenna. And uh, with help of the uh, phase conjugation, uh, plus two minus or minus two plus, uh, we can uh, control the uh, uh, beam, uh, we can control the beam direction to the uh, target position. So uh, uh, characteristic, uh, so uh, merit of the retro directive is not uh, only one. So uh, when we uh, transmit the pilot signal to the uh, retro directive uh, phase array antenna, uh, automatically uh, we can uh, control the beam, uh, micro beam to the receiver. This is a uh, 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 one merit. But additionally, uh, based on this uh, block diagram, uh, even if uh, antenna position is unconcerned, for example, uh, if uh, even if the antenna plane is bent, uh, it uh, this uh, antenna position change of the uh, transmitting antenna position involve the uh, incoming uh, uh, phase of the incoming pilot signal. So uh, this is, uh, there is no difference uh, between the position of the uh, receiver and the uh, 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 change of the uh, antenna, pod, uh, change of the transmitting antenna position, there is no difference. So uh, even if 
uh, antenna position is unconcerned in the phase array system, uh, this uh, retrodirective system uh, can uh, we can create the phase conjugation and uh, we can control the beam direction uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, receiver uh, position. So uh, this is a very interesting technology in the narrow beam WPT system and uh, retrodirective system. And uh, in Kyoto University from the 80s, uh, my boss uh, uh, developed the uh, first uh, retrodirective system uh, with uh, asymmetric to pilot signal uh, to reduce the interference between the pilot signal and the WPT uh, beam. Uh, theoretically, uh, we have to put the double frequency local oscillator and uh, in this system uh, incoming uh, frequency of the incoming pilot signal and the hyper micro beam uh, is uh, same frequency uh, as uh, in the same frequency but uh, if uh, we uh, use the same frequency for uh, both for the pilot signal and the uh, hyper micro beam uh, very uh, big uh, interference occurs so uh my boss uh considered uh we can apply the two pilot signal and asymmetry uh asymmetry and uh, as a result of the two uh, different frequency of the pilot signal uh we can avoid the we can suppress the interference uh, between the pilot signal and the hyper microwave beam and uh, of course uh, we change the uh, circuit uh, uh, we uh, in this uh, figures. So uh, this uh, in this system, uh, there is uh, there was no ambiguity and uh, there was no interference and uh, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, so uh, and additionally, uh, transmitting antenna and receiving antenna uh, share the same antenna. So it's a very interesting technology, approximately forty years ago, and. Uh, uh, in the uh, 90s, uh, I uh, developed uh, the other retrodirective system. Uh, in this system, uh, I apply the uh, uh, different frequency pilot signal uh, with help of this uh, analog circuit. And uh, in this system, uh, instead of the local signal, uh, we, uh, uh, I apply the pilot signal as a local oscillator and as a result of the uh, uh, reuse of the pilot signal. Uh, this retro uh, retrodirective system doesn't have a, a local uh, local oscillator, and uh, it's very simple and uh, stable uh, retrodirective system. This is a uh, 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 twenty years, uh, thirty years ago, uh, Kyoto University's uh, technologies. And uh, recently, in my university. Uh, we are uh, we are developing the March pass and the March unit retrodirective uh, systems. So March pass means an uh, indoor uh, WPT system. Uh, we uh, as a commercial system, uh, it's easy to uh, consider. Uh, we usually use the commercial WPT system in room, and uh, in room means uh, there are a lot of walls and the ceiling, and uh, it's a March pass circumstance. So uh, even if uh, the March in the March March pass circumstance, uh, retrodirective retro system uh, works uh, effectively. Uh, I'd like to uh, uh, I'd like to show you uh, next in the next slide. And uh, as a commercial system, uh, we want to use a March uh, multiple devices at the same time. It's uh, uh, easy to consider. So uh, for the March pass and for the March unit system, uh, we would like to apply the retrodirective system. And uh, this idea is originally from the OCR Corporation, uh, US startup, startup company, as I told you. Uh, this is named uh, Kota and uh, this is their patent. But uh, they are uh, a startup company and uh, uh, there is uh, no uh, good paper to describe this Kota system. So uh, we, Kyoto University, simulated and uh, developed the, this quota system, multi pass and multi user uh, retrodirective system. And uh, we add uh, some new idea to quota system. Uh, from um, uh, in the next slide, I'd like to introduce 
revised uh, quota system. So uh, this is a, a very basic uh, computer simulation in the multi-path retro-redirect system. And uh, we put, uh, for example, uh, we put a transmitter, uh, it's a phase array system, and uh, we put a receiver here. And uh, we put a one wall uh, or two walls in the simulation, uh, in the simulation area. And uh, uh, in this uh, multi-path circumstance, uh, we simulated the retro directive uh, system uh, from trans transmitter, we transmitted the, uh, uh, no, no, uh, at the receiver, we transmitted the uh, pilot signal to everywhere at the past. And uh, under the, uh, in the, uh, in the multi-path circumstance, of course, uh, direct uh, uh, pilot signal directly uh, beats the transmitter phase array antenna. And uh, additionally, uh, if we put the walls, uh, there is some reflection, uh, reflected pilot signal uh, into the, uh, uh, into the uh, transmit uh, phase array antenna. So in such a very complex uh, electromagnetic field situation, uh, how uh, retro directive works. So uh, this is a, uh, a computer simulation result of the multi-pass uh, multi directive system. Here you can see we put the receiver, and uh, here uh, we, uh, we transmit the microwave power, and uh, here you can see a direct pass here. And uh, additionally here, you can see the uh, a reflected microwave uh, beam here, and here, 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 and uh, uh, this is a two walls uh, result, and uh, uh, there are some uh, reflected waves in this field. So, uh, as a result of the some reflected wave, uh, we, uh, we find the some uh, interference occurs. But uh, uh, as a result of the computer simulation, uh, uh, even in the multi pass uh, retro directive system works well. And uh, as a result of the uh, increase of the uh, number of the uh, mic uh, micro beam uh, by the reflect as a reflected waves, uh, we can increase the uh, beam efficiency even in the uh, in the multi pass circumstance. Uh, so this is a very interesting uh, 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 result, and uh, this is a very good uh, evidence uh, how quota works and uh, uh, their pattern. Uh, 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 OCR's pattern uh, is correct. So uh, this is a very interesting basic uh, simulation. And uh, next, uh, we put the uh, water uh, line of sight uh, between the transmitting uh, uh, array antenna and the uh, receiver. And uh, this situation uh, is, uh, this situation uh, simulate the real uh, circumstance. Uh, uh, water uh, indicates the human body. So uh, in room situation, uh, usually uh, human, uh, human being uh, are in the room and uh, sometimes uh, human being uh, is in the, uh, into the beam. So, uh, but uh, uh, in the quota system, uh, they explain us uh, even uh, in the uh, uh, human uh, in the room, uh, uh, if uh, we install the quota system, uh, microwave beam avoid the human body because uh, if uh, we put the human body uh, between the transmitting antenna and the receiver, and uh, when, uh, transmit, uh, when a pilot signal is transmitted from the receiver, uh, at the uh, human body, uh, this pilot signal uh, uh, of the, uh, in the direct path is uh, absorbed and uh, there is no direct pass uh, between the uh, receiver and the transmitter. Uh, so, and uh, when we put the walls as a reflected plane, uh, in this case, uh, there is only the reflected uh, pilot signal uh, is uh, in this situation. So uh, in the quota system uh, in, uh, with a human body, uh, this uh, microwave beam avoid the human body and uh, this uh, microwave uh, transmitter, uh, microwave phase array antenna, uh, create only the reflected wave theoretically. So uh, OCR Corporation explained me. So I simulated. So 
uh, if uh, uh, we transmit the, uh, of course, in this case, uh, we put the receiver in front of the transmitting antenna. And uh, if uh, we don't mind the where human is, uh, best beam is just in front because uh, we put our, our receiver in front only. So in this case, uh, all micro power uh, uh, transmitted into the human body and uh, it's very uh, dangerous system. But uh, if uh, uh, we install the retrodirect system, uh, microwave beam avoid the, this water, uh, it's a human body and uh, microwave beam is only transmitted to the uh, walls only. So uh, uh, it means uh, this retrodirective system is very effective uh, to keep the safety uh, in the room, uh, in the uh, in March come circumstance. So uh, this is a very interesting result, I think. And uh, next, uh, we simulated uh, two uh, receivers case. So this is like a MIMO uh, system, march in, march out, uh, march in uh, with a phase array and a march out uh, to receivers here. And uh, in this case, uh, even in this case, uh, this uh, retro directive system uh, is uh, work well and uh, it's very effective system. So this is uh, one evidence uh, of uh, retro directive uh, system uh, work, uh, works. Uh, even in the uh, March pass and the March user case. So it's very interesting result. And uh, from here, please change mind, uh, change your mind from the beam homing to the transmitter. And uh, from here, I'd like to introduce uh, our Kyoto University's technology. Uh, we focus on the microwave tube and the magnetron. Magnetron is uh, commonly uh, applied for the microwave oven. And uh, why we choose the microwave tube magnetron for the nanobeam WPT is uh, magnetron is very cheap device and a uh, uh, high efficiency device. So uh, the, uh, usually uh, we uh, compare the microwave tube, for example, PWT or the other, and uh, sorry to state the devices. But uh, if uh, we, would, uh, we would like to increase the uh, power, uh, uh, now, uh, microwave tube is uh, better, I think. Of course, in near future, uh, gallium nitride or the, the other wideband uh, uh, wide uh, devices uh, is well developed and uh, power uh, can be increased uh, with a solid to state devices. But uh, now, just now, uh, I think uh, we can apply the microwave tube for the high power uh narrow beam WPT system, I think. So, and uh, additionally, uh, cost is a very big, uh, very big difference. Uh, magnetron uh, from the, uh, with a one dollar, uh, magnetron uh, uh, generates uh, 25 watts, but uh, from uh, with a semiconductor device, uh, one watt uh, creates only the 0.2 watt uh, only. So uh, cost, is the most important factor uh, to choose the magnetron. And uh, magnetron is uh, like this figure. This is a microwave tube and uh, it's a generator. So, and uh, as I told you, commonly applied for the heating uh, microwave oven. And uh, now uh, uh, magnetron is a very cheap device and uh, some, uh, someone considered magnetron is not good device. Uh, for the as a microwave transmitter, uh, because magnetron is just an oscillator and uh, spurious uh, becomes a lower and a Q uh, factor. Uh, spurious becomes a lower and a Q factor becomes a, a become high uh, by the uh, stable DC power and the filament current of uh, we found it. So uh, usually uh, spurious. Uh, Spurious is very high and uh, it is not suitable for the uh, uh, any application. But uh, when uh, we apply the DC power source and uh, filament cutoff technology, uh, we can suppress uh, uh, spurious and uh, we can increase the Q factor. And uh, additionally, uh, we, apply, uh, we apply the other two technology. Uh, 
uh, PL uh, feedback technology and uh, P, uh, uh, injection locking technology. And uh, in Kyoto University, uh, we achieved the uh, development of the phase and amplitude control magnet, we named it. So uh, this is a, a diagram of the uh, phase control magnet. Uh, we apply the injection locking and uh, PL feedback uh, with help of the uh, very stable high voltage and uh, cutoff frequency. And uh, as a result of the uh, this uh, added, added technology, uh, we can increase the Q factor of the uh, main frequency and uh, we can suppress the uh, uh, higher frequencies. And uh, recently, uh, uh, we apply, uh, we revised uh, this uh, uh, phase, uh, phase, uh, phase control uh, magnet loss. And uh, in uh, previous one, uh, we control the voltage of the uh, stable uh, high voltage source. But uh, in this case, uh, we, uh, of course, uh, we still use a high voltage power source, but uh, we, uh, uh, we apply the other peer feedback, uh, like the pre, uh, compared to the previous one, uh, we uh, apply the uh, peer, uh, phase lock loop uh, power uh, is to the other line. And uh, we uh, recently, uh, with help of uh, this other feedback loop and the power control loop, uh, we can uh, uh, decrease the cost of the high voltage uh, power source and uh, we succeeded uh, in developing the phase, uh, phase array uh, beam controlling with a magnetron. So this is a, a demonstration movie of the magnetron phase array. Here you can see uh, we put the magnetron, four magnetrons here. And uh, now uh, we, control, uh, we control the phases of each magnetron. And uh, as a result of the phase control, uh, we control the beam direction like this figure. So uh, this is a very uh, interesting, uh, our Kyoto University's technology uh, with a magnetron. And uh, of course, uh, um, Mitsubishi Heavy Industry Group uh, adopt our technology, phase control, uh, phase, uh, control magnetron technology uh, to demonstrate the very big uh, field experiment of the narrow beam WPT in uh, 20, uh, 2015. And uh, they developed the very big uh, magnetron phase array uh, with uh, 10 kilowatt and, uh, at the C band. And uh, they transmitted uh, this 10 kilowatt microwave to the 500 meters away at the receiver. And uh, as a result, uh, they succeeded uh, uh, to carry the wireless power uh, to at the five, uh, 500 meters uh, away. So uh, this uh, is a demonstration uh, for the uh, biggest uh, micro power transfer application of the space solar power satellite. I'd like to like introduce later. So uh, this technology can be applied for the sweep Simultaneous one. Uh, 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 Yes. で、電源がオンになり、映像が映りました。なあ、ウィアトランスミッション、サイマルティニアスリーインフォメーションアンドパワーワイヤレスリーとディスティビー。電源もDVDもないのになぜでしょう。ヒントはマイクロ波。私た
、つまりこのマシンは電子レンジプラス DVD ー映像信号を載せたマイクロ波を送ると電力と映像を伝えることができます机の上の機械はマイクロ波をテレビをつける電力に変換するものです丸い形の一つ一つがアンテナでこれがマイクロ波を受け取りますトーナメント表のような部品は整流器アンテナで受け取ったマイクロ波をテレビの電力に変換しています離れたところに電力と情報を伝えることができますこんな実験のように私たちの研究室はマイクロ波で電力を送る研究をしていますパナソニックグループ considered. So、uh, we are developing 
the wireless powered wear vital sensor now. And uh, this is a very simple uh, cartoon. Uh, we put a very simple antenna because uh, uh, power is limited uh, up to one watt and uh, antenna gain is uh, uh, limited uh, up to 60 dBi. Uh, this is uh, uh, just the same as RFID RF, RF regression. So uh, the antenna is not uh, special in this case, but uh, we are developing the very good rectifier for the uh, wearable uh, uh, vital sensors. And uh, this is a, a commercial uh, movie. Uh, Panasonic named it the uh, NS Sphere. Micro このウェアラブルセンサが胸に貼り付けられており、心電データの取得を行っています。We so just now we are waiting uh, for the publication of the new radio regulation. Maybe uh, in uh, June uh, 2022, uh, new uh, radio regulation will be produced in Japan. So uh, please change mind uh, from Japan to US. Uh, this is a very interesting YouTube movie uh, by the startup US company, uh, Powercast. So uh, this is a wireless charger. Uh, for the Nintendo Dream Machine Switch. Uh, from the transmitter to the Nintendo Switch uh, receiver, uh, automatically and uh, unconsciously uh, they can uh, charge the battery. Important point is available at the Amazon. So now in US only uh, you can buy, oh, sorry. Or you can buy it on the Amazon.com. I think this is only one WPT commercial device uh, for the common people, uh, not for business people. Uh, we can buy it on the Amazon.com. So this is a very interesting technology in US. And uh, of course, uh, the other uh, uh, startup, startup company, Osia, uh, is uh, working. Uh, to uh, to promote our uh, Fafiru WPT. And uh, now uh, they have already received the uh, formal, uh, formal permission uh, of the uh, WPT uh, by the uh, Federal Communications, uh, uh, Federal Communications Commission, FCC. And uh, for the business people only now, uh, they can uh, produce the quota system uh, in, the, uh, in US. So uh, also, yeah, a quota system is very interesting as I explained uh, before. So I, I expect the US uh, startup company's activity now. And uh, in China, uh, uh, produce uh, wireless charger for the mobile phone. This is a uh, uh, YouTube movie. 全球首发隔空重叠技术未来智能家居将真正进入无限化这不是科幻这是科技小米隔空充电技术 
And uh, after, uh, after this YouTube movie, this is uh, announced in uh, last year. But uh, now, unfortunately, there is no next, uh, next announce from the Xiaomi. But uh, I believe uh, they are developing uh, this uh, WPT uh, technology for their uh, smartphones. So it's very interesting. And uh, of course, uh, uh, we should harmonize the frequency and the regulation for the Fapiru WPT in the world. Uh, now uh, we can buy, uh, you can buy the power cast uh, wireless charger for the uh, switches only in the US. But uh, it's uh, it's not convenient. So uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to establish the common rule, common regulation in the world of the Fafiru WPT, uh, we uh, Japanese uh, 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 give uh, uh, some uh, documents and uh, we join the discussion uh, to create the new regulation of the Fafiru WPT in ITU, as I told you. And uh, now, uh, for example, in last year, the last November uh, 2021, uh, now we need one agreement uh, to, uh, to create the pre uh, preliminary draft uh, new report, uh, ITU, RSM, uh, et cetera. So uh, now uh, from Japan, from US, or as from the other country, uh, they, uh, we input uh, various kind of the uh, document to describe the WPT commercial application. And uh, now in last, uh, in last November, uh, in this uh, preliminary draft or uh, new report, uh, we put uh, this uh, eight uh, WPT system in various frequency uh, areas. And uh, this full system, four, five, six, is based on the Japanese new regulation. And uh, for, uh, system one, two, uh, three, and uh, seven, eight is uh, from US. Uh, can you see that this uh, system eight uh, millimeter waves over 60 gigahertz? Uh, US is considering about the application of the millimeter wave WPT. So uh, now uh, we keep discussion in the ITUR and uh, uh, we are negotiating in, uh, all over the world because ITUR uh, is like a United Nation. So uh, uh, we would like to harmonize the uh, we would like to harmonize the WPT uh, systems uh, common in the world. But uh, unfortunately, uh, now uh, the mind uh, in the WPT researchers and uh, companies uh, is separated. Uh, it is because uh, of the first question uh, uh, submitted to the ITUR uh, uh, first, uh, first. So uh, this is a, a question to, uh, to discuss the new regulation of the wireless power transfer. And uh, this is a very important question, this one. Uh, and uh, what category of the spectrum use should be uh, uh, administration considered WPT, ISM or other? So uh, 920 megahertz, uh, 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz, and for example, uh, 24 gigahertz, uh, like this. These frequency are on the ISM band, industrial, scientific, and medical band. So historically, uh, we use the WPT system in the ISM band mainly. But uh, for the business, uh, WPT is uh, suitable for the ISM band or not suitable. We should expand the uh, meaning of the WPT uh, except the ISM band. This is a uh, very interesting discussion. So based on this question, now we Japan uh, consider WPT is not only the ISM application and uh, uh, WPT is one of the radio application. So uh, now Japanese government decide uh, WPT uh, in the WPT system, we need a license. So uh, this is a one, uh, one category of the WPT. And uh, this is a Japanese uh, situation. But US and China 
uh, they are considering uh, uh, the WPT is one of the IECM applications. So Paracast, OCR, or the other, and uh, Xiaomi, for example, uh, these company uh, uh, consider the WPT is the ISM band, and uh, the government considers the uh, uh, WPT is a uh, uh, ISM band uh, application. So uh, now uh, between Japan and uh, US China, uh, there are a big difference. Uh, how to uh, consider the WPT, ISM or not. And uh, additionally, in EU, Europe, uh, they are considering about the WP, uh, uh, they are considering WPT is one of the short range device. This is the third way. So uh, now we work together as a, uh, as a WPT researcher and company, but in the different world now. Uh, uh, this is a, uh, 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 not good uh, situation, but uh, we keep discussion and we keep negotiation in the ITUR. So uh, in near future, uh, I, 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 uh, I really think uh, we can harmonize the WPT is uh, in the uh, one, uh, uh, one uh, application. Uh, I don't know radio application or ICM uh, 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 suitable, but uh, uh, in near future, uh, we can match the old WPT application in the same uh, world, I think. And uh, from here, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce a commercial application of the narrowband. Unfortunately, uh, there is only a few, uh, uh, few commercial applications of narrowband WPT because there is no regulation uh, even uh, in, in the world. So, but uh, for example, in Kyoto University with uh, Minebi and Mitsumi Corporation, Japanese company, uh, we apply the narrowbeam WPT to check the infrastructure wirelessly and uh, uh, battery free. And uh, we put the, for example, we will put the uh, battery free uh, sensor in the tunnel. And uh, this is, uh, we consider the screw sensor system is most suitable uh, for the WPT system. And uh, we carried out uh, 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 WPT experiment uh, with this phase array and with this car with a phase array system. And uh, from the uh, driving car, uh, we detect the position of the uh, sensor at the tunnel. And uh, to the detected position, uh, we control the beam direction and uh, we transmit it uh, uh, power wirelessly. So this is a very interesting. Uh, technology by Minevi Amitsumi Corporation and the Kyoto University. And uh, now we keep uh, this R&D. Uh, so, and, uh, and uh, we keep a negotiation to create a new regulation for this uh, narrowband WPT in Japan. And uh, of course, uh, WPT to flying drone or airplane uh, is one of the most important application. And uh, previously, uh, in, in the past, uh, there were some uh, uh, important uh, field experiment uh, by uh, field experiment of the WPT to the flying airplane in Canada in 1987 and in Japan 1992. I, I was a student and I joined it in the Japanese experiment. And uh, in this experiment, uh, we transmitted the high power microwave to the flying airplane and uh, we succeeded in the fuel-free airplane uh, field experiment uh, in Japan in 90. And uh, recently in Japan, uh, we are developing the uh, WPT to the flying drone system. And uh, for example, in 2018, uh, uh, this system uh, uh, and we put the receiver with a very good uh, and uh, now we are uh, 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 the uh, 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 so this is a Japanese situation. 
And uh, this is uh, only one startup company to promote the narrow beam WBT in New Zealand, uh, named uh, Emerald. So uh, now they are promoting the uh, uh, narrow beam WPT as a commercial system, they, uh, they say. So uh, I expect the future of the Emerald and the narrow beam WPT as a commercial application, I think. And uh, of course, uh, narrow beam WPT uh, can be applied for the future dream. Uh, solar power satellite power from the space. Uh, we can concentrate the microwave power uh, to uh, from the 36,000 kilometer above in space. And uh, from the space, uh, we transmit the microwave power with over 90% beam efficiency at the receiver. And uh, when we uh, realize the solar power satellite SPS, uh, we can increase the uh, uh, efficiency of the uh, solar cells and uh, we keep the uh, very clean CO2 free, uh, uh, CO2 free electricity, uh, even in the night and even in the rainy day uh, with the help of the narrow beam WPT. This is our uh, future dream solar power satellite. And uh, in Japan and in, uh, in the world, uh, there are a lot of uh, R&D uh, supported by the government. So uh, uh, it's very uh, hopeful uh, narrow beam WPT application, solar power satellite. So uh, it's time to close. This is a conclusion. Uh, I think uh, this is a perspective of the wireless power transfer in next decade. Uh, uh, before um, uh, MIT's revolution around the uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2010, uh, it's uh, around the period of the uh, WPT, I think. And uh, after MIT's revolution, uh, uh, 2010. Uh, uh, so this is a, a period of the commercialization, commercialization of the inductive WPT, for example, wireless charger for the uh, mobile phone or the uh, 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 code, uh, code free earphone. And uh, from now, we are in 2022. And uh, from 2020, uh, it's a start uh, of the commercialization of the wide beam WPT with help of the new radio regulation especially in Japan. And uh, next decade, uh, from 2030, uh, I expect the narrow beam WPT as a commercial application. And uh, in 2040, uh, I, I believe uh, we, uh, we realize IoT and IOE society, Internet of Things, uh, it's, a, 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 it's a mainly based on the wireless communication technology and the IOE. Internet of Energy uh, Society. And uh, future, uh, uh, in uh, more uh, in future, uh, after 2050, it's my dream, uh, we can realize our SPS, power from the space. This is a perspective and a future prediction, uh, uh, my future prediction of the wireless power transfer. So uh, this is a future image I draw, but uh, please don't uh, believe uh, my dream only. Best way to predict the future is to invent it. Uh, so uh, I expect uh, your invention and uh, your future dream with help of the WPT. So uh, that's all my talk and uh, it's a last. Uh, this is a WPT textbook. Uh, so uh, I published uh, some uh, textbook of the, the wireless power transfer. And uh, additionally, uh, these books are translated in Chinese. So if you are interested in the wireless power transfer technology uh, in detail, uh, please uh, check these uh, textbooks uh, to run the wireless power transfer. So uh, that's all my talk. So thank you so much. Thank you for a uh, long time. So I would like to finish my talk. Uh, thank you very much.